<clears throat> okay, um, just first of all, I apologize for the lighting. Um, I have the world's worst lighting in my room. Good morning. Um, it is Tuesday, February <sighs> what even fourth or something? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? This is kind of an expected video. Um an unexpected video, not expected video. I don't even <laughs> where do I start? I'm not gonna get into the background of this no let me just first of all, let me just introduce what the heck is happening. <laughs> I am on a mission, uh, a personal mission, in order to get my period back. I have um, hypothalamic amenorrhea, and I <laughs> I haven't had a period for um, about a year and a half, uh, going on to. Only recently in the past few months have I um, seen a specialist. I saw an endocrinologist or an endocrinologist and got a whole bunch of blood work done bunch of tests I got an, a brain scan MRI and basically in terms of results things came back inconclusive um, basically from the doctor standpoint because I had like okay let me just explain <laughs> basically uh, my results showed that my um, FSH and LH levels were low my pituitary gland wasn't secreting the hormones to to my ovaries in order to um, produce estrogen and progesterone in the hormones in order to make period. So um, we ruled out any sort of reproductive issue. I had no cyst on my ovaries. There was nothing um, anatomically wrong with my reproductive structure. It was a uh, a brain issue, um, or not a brain issue, but a hormonal issue that was um, rooted in the brain and the hypothalamus and the, the pituitary axis. So my hypothalamus was not telling the pituitary to secrete um, FSH and LH. And according to her, that means that she doesn't know, basically she has no answer for me. And she wanted me basically to go on birth control or if I didn't want to, to do a low dose estrogen therapy. And I respectfully declined. <laughs> And I wouldn't get into the reasons why in this video, but I'm, through my own research, I have um, discovered this thing called hypothalamic amenorrhea, and it looks like I, like, cl clinically, it looks like this is what I have, and I was kind of in denial for a while because I only thought that I needed to be an extreme athlete, or um, extremely underweight and thin, and have, like, no body fat, or my stress was not valid. Um, but I'm coming to terms with now that the, the lifestyle that I've been living the past few years in terms of my, uh, I don't know, my, my diet and lifestyle habits have not been conducive, um, and, um, basically good for, um, my body. Uh, I've been stressing my body out, and there's been a, I, I believe that it's been a combination of factors, I believe that it's been... Um, a combination of emotional things. 2018 and 2017 were both uh, emotionally difficult years. Also, uh, I'm in university and I'm in a like quite a academically competitive um, university, and so obviously that's a that's a stressor all the time. But there were a lot of personal things that I went through, and not to mention the whole thing that I'm trying to deal with now is I am recognizing that I need to eat more, and I need to eat a lot more. Uh, so this is what this is. I wanted to document basically my journey through trying to get my period back and this has already been uh, like a, a two year journey, like a year plus journey basically. Um, but I am coming to terms now that I just need to let go. I need to do certain things. I need to stop exercising. Which, even saying it, I'm like, there's a protest in my head being like, no, no, <laughs> you can still do this. But I have this goal that I'm going to get my period before my birthday, and my birthday is March 24th. Um, and that is my personal goal, so I'm going to do everything in my power to try to tell my body, hey, it's okay, 
you can make a period. So basically I've been doing this the past two days, um, starting this recovery journey. Um, and again, I won't really go into in depth or my history. So um, the past two days I've really um, succumbed to this unrestrictive mindset and I'm taking this recovery mindset where I'm realizing I need to eat more and I'm the first day was really hard because I was not hungry like physically hungry I should say one of the things in recovery that they tell you is that um, mental hunger is real hunger and boy did I have mental hunger I was always thinking about food I was always stressed about food I was literally scared to eat or scared of my own hunger cues i had this conscious like calorie limit in my head or i still had this very restrictive mindset where i still needed like i feel I, I still felt like i needed to to restrict and stay within this like limit um and that just made me obsess um over food and even though i, I would have good times and bad times i realized that like those good times were just when i felt like i was in control and when i felt like i was a quote unquote normal eater um, and any time that I felt out of control and I ate too much I would feel like a bad eater. Now I'm recognizing that I just need to say fuck it in order to overcome um, I either heal my body and tell it that it needs a period I need consistent energy intake um, a lot of energy intake and I am coming to terms with the fact that I my need to gain weight and that's tricky for me because I have already um, I, I, I'm not <laughs> I'm not like low in my BMI I'm not there's nothing I'm quote unquote normal body weight um, if anything the way I am now is a backlash from my dieting and my disordered eating And so the idea that I would need to put on more than I already have is hard to to fathom, but I recognize that weight isn't it isn't the point here. It's the fact that my body needs to know that there is sufficient energy and sufficient food intake coming like constantly. There's no restriction. There's no any sort of fasting. There's no any sort of restricting any sort of food groups, any types of food. That means everything is on like everything is fair game um, I can eat anything that I want that I basically think about and I want um, <laughs> that I should have which the first day was really really scary um, and this was Sunday so it's Tuesday today yesterday I went grocery shopping and I meant to actually film it but I didn't but I think I might give you guys a little mini tour of some of the things that I bought if not I'll just kind of like film what I'm eating and kind of tell you guys but holy moly, like I was told <laughs> that when you start eating, you're gonna get this like extreme hunger. The past few days, I've been like, you know, unrestricted eating and I've been eating so much. Like any time that I like, I think like, wow, this is like a significant amount of food. I don't even know if I could finish this. I finish it and then I'm hungry like half an hour later. Like it's, it's insane. So it just kind of goes to show that like my body really is like, telling me that I need more food so in a sense this is quote-unquote intuitive eating um, but if you are coming from a history of disordered or an eating disorder you need to start by kind of force feeding yourself and kind of just like anytime you mentally think about food anytime you're kind of like oh like I don't know I guess like mental hunger right you need to honor that because I find once you start, you, you, you kind of second guess yourself and then once you start eating it, you're like, oh, I really want this and then you're hungry. For instance, last night I had my dinner and it was a big filling dinner. Um, mind you, it actually, it was actually like, there was a lot of like veggies and salad and rice and like this like fish cake that I had, but it wasn't like, it was a big portion, but it wasn't like super, super energy dense because I recognize it did have vegetables, but that's just what I was craving. And so like maybe an hour later or so, I had a butter tart, which are like one of my favorite desserts, <laughs> um, which I think are like a Canadian thing. I don't know, maybe let me know, <laughs> um, which was amazing. And then 
like before like a few hours later this is around like 10 p.m. or something or I was about to go to bed and then I was like thinking about an apple and then I was like okay like I'll I don't know if I feel like an apple but I'm at least gonna grab it and I'm gonna bring it beside my bed in case like so I know that I can have it if I want it so I did that started eating the apple it was fine but didn't really finish it I didn't like really like I didn't really want to also I brushed my teeth and so it tasted not great and then I started having thoughts about these cookies that I just bought these like um the, I forget what they're called anyway but these little cookies I can show you and then I was like really Riley like and this is me like trying to fall asleep and I was like all right like I'm gonna honor it and so <laughs> I went upstairs and I ate one and I was like oh my gosh I actually do want one of these and I had three um, definitely could have had more and um, then I was like okay cool like I'll let this sit or rest and then you know um, I should be fine now and then I went back to bed and then I had this another strong urge to have like a bagel and cream cheese and I was like and like my stomach like this is like physical hunger now like it's like I passed the point where of mental hunger where I've been giving myself a lot of food that is actually like oh my god and it's giving me physical hunger signals now so this is me like lying in bed this isn't just me being like mm, this feels nice like or this sounds really nice this is like now my body is like actually like oh my god <laughs> eat 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 and so then I went upstairs and I didn't want to use the last bagel that I had so I bought these like crumpets and so I toasted a crumpet and put cream cheese on it and then after that I went to bed I was kind of worried I was like is this all of this food oh I should also mention I forgot I bought a tub of Ben and Jerry's and so I had some of that before the apple before I went to bed so it was like like <laughs> dinner and then a butter tart and then ice cream and then an apple and then <laughs> cookies and then a crumpet with cream cheese and like honestly I could have eaten more but at this point it was like 1 a.m. and I was like Riley you have a 930 shift this morning which speaking of which I have to be conscious of you have a 930 a.m. shift like you need to get to bed and that was like my only motivation was like okay like I could keep eating um, but I was like okay what can tide me over until morning because I need to get some sleep so that's just an example and yeah anyway I've been rambling for a long time um, I actually really need to get ready because I do have work um, very soon, but um, I'll keep you guys posted. But yeah, okay, I'll see you soon. But if you have that fear, those food thoughts are scary and they're terrifying and they make you more anxious. Should I eat? What do I want? I'm not hungry, but I know I should eat, so what should I eat? I don't want to eat that. I kind of feel sick. It's hard. It's hard because it feels wrong. It feels wrong. My housemate coming down and going off to the gym while I eat my butter tart and my cookies. If you are having these obsessive thoughts, they're not going to go away from you trying to practice mindfulness. I'm sad that I'm, that I'm at this place. 